Uh, this is uh, this is the schematic of an I think pre-season mental health platform from quick ease recording to AI analysis. The I think wave device first send 19 channel EEG and PPG data to the tablet through the Bluetooth connection, and then data are uploaded to the cloud after the recording. In the cloud, the data goes through automated AI denoising pipeline, and then sensor and source level features are extracted and then compared to age and sex classified normative database. The data is also gone through biomarker analysis. Uh, we have uh, MCI biomarker analysis using 19 channel QEG data, and we also have uh, depression and anxiety emotion biomarker analysis using HRV data from PPG sensors. Uh, finally, all the EEG and HRV and quick biomarker analysis report can be reviewed on the iSync wave application within 10 minutes after the recording. The detailed full report can also be reviewed on the, on the web. Uh, this slide shows a brief overview of iSync Wave AI brain mapping and LED therapy device as a KFDA class two medical device. Uh, this device is controlled by iSync Wave app on the tablet, and summary result can also be reviewed on the mobile phone. iSync Wave currently have two main functionality. One is uh, EEG scanning, brain scanning and the other is personalized LED therapeutics. The neurofeedback function will be added soon on the iSync Wave application. As a brain scanning headset, the head circumference between 50 to 62 centimeter will be fit for the recording. The head size under the 50 centimeter, for example, from toddler to preschooler, will be covered in the next model device uh, targeting these uh, preschool children. In the headset, there are 19 ch each channel in standard international 1020 location, while each electrode made of a soft conductive polymer with tips coated with AG and AGCL. Uh, one of the main features in this headset is uh, automatic positioning of standardized 1020 location using a rack pinion gear. This is the rack pinion gear. Uh, all the headset, uh, while ex headset expand uh, with maintaining symmetry, symmetry and also maintaining tension through the springs between the gear while expanding the headset for a quality measurement. Uh, the left ear lobe is used as a reference elect electrode and the center of the forehead used as the ground. Uh, there is a, a auxiliary, auxiliary PPG sensor which is clipped on the right earlobe, uh, which are also connected to device, I think wave device through a cable. A rechargeable lithium-ion battery is enclosed in the device, which are charged through USB-C connector on the device. It, it usually takes two hours to achieve full charging through a conventional charging adapter. After full charging, the device can be used about seven hours. Using, without using device for 10 minutes, the device automatically turned off while no battery is con consumed during the power off. The main amplifier has specially designed analog front end which maximize signal to noise ratio on the first part of the EEG acquisition. The amplifier bandwidth between the 0.5 to 50 Hertz and 250 Hertz sampling rate is used. 
as a LED therapy device for transcranial uh, photobiomodulation, there are 19 LEDs inside the headset, while each LED is in the center of the 19 standard electrode position, respectively. Each LED can be modulated independently from 1 to 45 hertz. We can target specific area or network with specific frequency based on patient brain mapping. Uh, suppose many other conventional neural modulation, for example, TMS, TDCS, uh, many conventional neural modulation cannot stimulate several areas at the same time, but the photomodulation using this device can achieve this very easily. We can target many area, many network at the same time and very conveniently and safely. We use uh, 850 nanometer infrared LED bulbs with radiant intensity of 150 milliwatt per steroidian. The minimum requirement for the tablet for the stable for a stable operation is an Android tablet having uh, four gigabit gigabyte RAM with Android 8 OS or, or above. Uh, this slide shows a brief overview of the iSync Brain CE connected after the iSync Wave recording. Uh, this is the KFDA Crest 2 software medical device for quantitative EEG with uh, uh, integrated with first ever sex classified database, normative database. Uh, which uh, this uh, software is comprised of three main block, AI denoising with manual supervision and pitch extraction with cleaned data and the normative deep database comparison with G-score color coding. Uh, in the AI algorithm, seven consecutive steps are performed as follows. The band pass filters data is passed through the common average reference remontage and then machine learning based bad epoch rejection. And then Amica component rejection by AI. Finally, remaining bad epoch can be rejected like this Amica component rejection. And then finally, bad epoch rejection. We have clean data automated by AI, but sometimes we, when we, not, we do not satisfy the AI result, we can manually denoise the data uh, additionally. Once getting the clean EEG data, the sensor and source level feature are extracted by routine process and compared with age and sex classified lifespan database. The details of first ever sex classified database can be reviewed in the paper published in Frontier in Neuroscience. Uh, in this slide, uh, exemplar I think brain C reporting items are displayed for an ADHD children's data in the absolute power map there are red area in the SETA and alpha one and alpha two band, the frontal SETA and overall uh, slow alpha excess reflecting typical under arousal pattern in ADHD and double red spot in alpha two band is a common finding called the view rhythm, which blocks information processing or follow between frontal part of the brain and posterior part of the brain. The 2D theta beta ratio image shows the most unhealthy area using this arrow and the 3D interact. This is the snapshot of the 3D from the 3D interactive viewer. You can show the most problem problematic area. And the, in the below, we can also find the dipole source information uh, coming, the, the dipole source information shows the origin of the frontal, 
frontal slow wave and is Broadman area. In, in this case, superior frontal gyrus. This is the example case of the I think brain C reporting items. Uh, in this slide, uh, early screening QEG biomarker analysis report for the Alzheimer's dementia. Uh, this is another KFDA class two medical software medical device. The biomarker analysis predict stage of Alzheimer dementia progression using uh, multi-level ensembles of machine learning classifier. In the multi-level structure, dementia and non-dementia are classified at the first, and then non-dementia group classified as normal and MCI. MCI is the mild cognitive impairment, uh, the stage between the normal and dementia. And finally, each group is further uh, classified with respect to the amyloid pathology model. We can define uh, the Alzheimer dementia projections trajectory with five different classes using the multi-level ensemble model. The health population will be ranged between the zero to 60%, and MCI population will be ranged 60 to 85%. The X axis in the report correspond to the age, Y axis correspond to the probability of uh, dementia development. When the result is more close to the Alzheimer dementia trajectory, the probability will be high. Details of machine learning model uh, can be found in the paper published in Frontier in Computational Neuroscience. Uh, I'd like to briefly introduce, I think, HART, which is the, also another medical device for evaluating autonomic nervous system. Combining, I think, brain and I think HART analytics with 19 channel EEG data and PPG data coming from the iSync wave headset, we can profile patient heart and brain, autonomic nervous system and central nervous system at the same time. The first step is extraction of RR interval, bit to bit interval after machine learning denoising. This is the pulse detected by the, the the PPG sensor, this is the ECG. Uh, we only uh, collect the PPG data, but usually pulse, uh, trans pulse detected in, at the ear lobe, the uh, pulse to bit to bit interval is identical to the conventional uh, ECG recording. So we can extract the pulse to pulse interval this interval shows this kind of variation. This is called it heart rate, heart rate variability. This heart rate variability can be, uh, uh, can be uh, we can apply FFT analysis to the uh, HRV time, time series, and then we can find the LF sympathetic power and HF, the parasympathetic power. Uh, using the FFT analysis. The, this figure uh, shows the example of heart rate variability data and lifespan life changes of HRV normative database. The database uh, established uh, at the same time with the first ever first sex classified QEG database. The database shows the sympathetic, this is the sympathetic tone across to the age lifespan. The sympathetic tone is high in the middle of the lifespan and stress index increase with the age and heart rate decrease with the age and heart rate variability also decrease with the age. This is the mean, uh, mean dynamics across the age and the standard deviation in all different uh, HRV parameters. The blue dot uh, shows the all subject data on the on the each 
normative development education. This is the I think hot normative database and uh, a sample analysis result. Uh, before going further, uh, I'd like to briefly introduce basic concept for understanding EEG and quantitative analysis. Uh, we have to understand the FFT, purely uh, fast Fourier transform for using QEEG. The prism analogy is very useful. If the white right instant on the prism, the right is separated by rainbow color after passing through the prism. The FFT decomposes original brain rhythm EEG into various frequency rhythm from uh, delta to gamma. Before, uh, this is the uh, sim simple, uh, simple example case. Before the decomposition, EEG brainwave is a kind of irregular oscillation like this, but it can decompose by three different frequency component uh, by FFT algorithm. The FFT algorithm uh, calculate which frequency component have uh, a certain amount of power respectively, uh, like this example. In both example case, the FFT power basically is identical because the FFT power is uh, amplitude scale. Summation of amplitude scale divided by two. The, in this case, the two hertz oscillation with amplitude three microvolt and one hertz oscillation with eight hertz and one hertz, uh, uh, one microvolt amplitude with uh, 11 hertz combined together for the FFT power, this, this uh, rhythm is FFT power is uh, amplitude scale, for example, summation of amplitude scale divided by two, the FFT power of this uh, this oscillation is 5.5 microvolt scale. And in, in this case, the two hertz, two hertz amplitude is one, the eight hertz amplitude is one, and 11 hertz amplitude is three microvolt combined together make this oscillation. In this case, the summation of the each uh, amplitude scale is the same. So the FFT power is the same both in both different oscillation, but alpha absolute power is different when we define the alpha frequency band from eight to 12 Hertz, the alpha power is uh, summation of uh, one scale plus one scale in this case, and in this case, one scale plus three scale. The absolute power, alpha absolute power is one microvolt scale in this case, and five microvolt scale in this case. We can also define the alpha relative power. Alpha relative power is defined by alpha absolute power divided by the total FFT power. Uh, this is the, uh, all the, if we understand this concept, we can, uh, we can understand half of the uh, QEG space using this kind of, a simple uh, methodology. But in the real EEG signal, uh, FFT spectra, FFT spectra in this case only three component, but real EEG signal, FFT spectra, uh, usually continuous and a bit complex, but logic for power calculation is the same. Uh, here you, you can see the real EEG data having normal alpha rhythm in the back of the head and abnormal beta spindle in the frontal area. This is front, front and back. The sequence of the electrode location is front and back. And usually the beta, this is, you can see the very high oscillation compared to this alpha rhythm, usually 10 Hertz here. Uh, this beta spindle is around uh, between the 20 to 30 Hertz. The uh, beta, beta oscillation compared, comparable to the alpha uh, oscillation amplitude is uh, usually uh, 
of normal. In this case, you can see the beta wave. This is the eye blinking. Usually eye blinking makes the frontal, prefrontal electrodes a uh, slow, slow wave. And the horizontal eye movement also uh, kind of, uh, kind of a different direction slow wave. This kind of uh, eye movement should be uh, removed, should be cleaned before making the FFT analysis. So this is the AI generate AI made uh, clean data. Using this clean, clean data, we apply the FFT algorithm to find the alpha power and beta power. Actually, this the average amplitude of this alpha oscillation, average amplitude of this beta beta oscillation. This is the QEG simple understanding of the QEG te technology. And I'd like to briefly show another one example. This is the common uh, artifact, the T3 and T4, a temporal muscle artifact. Temporal muscle usually is not the brain wave. The uh, signal uh, generated on the surface of the muscle, not uh, from beneath the scalp, not from the uh, dural, dural, uh, dural tissues. This kind of temporal muscle should be cleaned before the uh, power FFT analysis. This is the automatic AI uh, automatic cleaning. And you can see the very tiny uh, bit uh, sharp wave uh, pulsation. This is the ECG artifact also removed by the AI. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I hope this kind of simple uh, FFT understanding is very uh, useful for the for the uh, uh, for the uh, experience in this field. Uh, it, once uh, FFT frequency spectra is understood, I'd like to suggest that a concept of easy phenotype using FFT frequency analysis could be very efficient for understanding landscape of QEG space for associating patient symptom with FFT result. The figure shows the conventional EEG spectrum having usually peaks in the alpha frequency band. The power decrease with frequency is normal pattern and healthy pattern except the alpha peak. The alpha peak amplitude decreased when patients open their eyes, called alpha, alpha blocking, uh, reflect the visual cortex uh, start, to work, start to work. Alpha is basically a resting rhythm and the, we can estimate low frequency below the alpha reflect more deep relaxation and upper frequency above alpha reflect more concentration. And alpha power itself usually very, uh, stronger in the back of the head because frontal lobe is uh, usually busier in healthy normal condition. Uh, at this point, we can define two easy phenotypes. One is the over arousal, the other is under arousal. Uh, under arousal phenotype, uh, alpha frequency, on the arousal phenotype, alpha frequency decreased and frontal alpha uh, dominate compared to the posterior alpha. And further, alpha rhythmicity disappears. And finally, setter rhythm appears, which is shown peak frequency located in the theta range, not alpha range. Uh, all this pattern can be categorized under arousal, uh, which often associated with the cognitive decline, the degenerative disorder, developmental disorder, and etc. On the other hand, there is over arousal phenotype, which is exactly opposite direction. The alpha frequency goes higher, the alpha desynchronize, and beta spindle or beta frequency dominant beta peak activity is now in the beta frequency band. This is often associated with the symptom like 
anxiety, OCD, worriness, insomnia, addiction, and etc. I'd like to add one uh, age dynamics of the posterior dominant alpha rhythm. The alpha peak frequency developed into adult range in the early adolescent and decline in the normal aging. But alpha frequency is slower than average, uh, slower than average uh, age relevant average in developmental disorder and cognitive decline in senior population, while alpha frequency is higher than normative values in many overall arousal phenotypes such as PTSD, insomnia, busy brain, and etc. Uh, I'd like to stress actual landscape is more complex where many disorder shows under arousal phenotype and over arousal phenotype at the same time. For example, some depression uh, patient shows under, under arousal phenotype, but uh, other group, another group of depression patient shows uh, over arousal phenotype. Uh, well-known depression medication, SSRI, SSRI, will respond very well to under-arousal phenotype, but shows bad side effect to over-arousal depression patient group. As we see here, many mental disorders have over-arousal subgroup and under-arousal subgroup at the same time. And sometimes both phenotypes appear in a single patient too. The intervention for different EEG phenotypes should be different. Opposite interventions should be given in opposite, opposite phenotype. For example, activation intervention for under arousal phenotype and calming intervention for over arousal phenotype should be given. But opposite, show, opposite gives a bad effect. The over arousal phenotype can also be uh, differentiated uh, more in detail and under arousal phenotype also can be differentiated more in detail like this. Detail is phenotype and intervention approach for each phenotype can be found in published paper by Jay Gunkelman in 2005 and 2015 respectively. This is a brief overview of EEG phenotype in mental disorder. Uh, we can categorize over, overactive phenotype and underactive phenotype basically. Uh, we can more, uh, more uh, detail differentiation using this uh, Jay Gunkelman's phenotype, but base concept is over arousal and under arousal. Uh, in the I think way quick report, we use the source level, source theta beta to ratio. Theta is the uh, key marker of the under arousal, beta is key marker of the over arousal. We use uh, theta beta ratio as a simple quick, uh, quick screening uh, measure. So using the source level, source uh, theta beta ratio, we can give the quick. Uh, Summary QEG report. The, the quick, quick easy summary report uh, shows underactive and overactive area in the source level uh, voxel power. Uh, for the source level calculation, we use the Colin 27 head model and the split it into five millimeter unit, which makes finally uh, 16,008 voxels, and uh, we uh, segmented this uh, 60,008 voxel uh, with uh, 68 ROI defined by Desikan Kiliani Atlas, and we further segmented by eight different brain lobes like this, the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital, and also, also divide web 10 right. 
the theta beta ratio basically calculated in the voxel level and compared to the source level normative database. And finally, the underactive and overactive area color coded with red and blue respectively. In this case, quite normal case. There is no color coded area in this case, in the source level set of ratio. And we can also give the percentile value the, for each eight brain lobes where low percentile reflect the underactive or high percentile uh, reflect overactive or over, over arousal phenotype. Uh, this figure shows the activity location for each eight different brain lobes respectively. In this case, quite balanced in all eight different lobes. Uh, and we also give the uh, detailed source level report like this. Uh, in, the source, in this case, you can see the temporal, right temporal is more, shows more activation and the right uh, parietal lobe more activation uh, more activation in this case compared to the counterpart each lobe uh, brain lobe can be break down more closely with uh, 68 roi segmentation in deskan killian atlas like this the result shows the key function of each roi and the percentile activation compared to the normative value. And uh, here is the comprehensive HRV result. From the table, we can find the percentile value for each heart rate and stress index and heart rate variability index and total power and uh, sympathovagal power respectively. In the percent, we can have the percentile value and we can also have the autonomic a balance chart like this. In this case, SDNN is quite low percentile. Uh, SDNN is uh, usually very high uh, in the health population. In this case, low, low percentile means HRV is small, variability is small. Uh, HRV autonomic resilience is small in this case. Uh, and the sympathobagal balance in this case, parasympathetic activity is dominated. Uh, we can combine these uh, paramet parameters and we can find the three different area, excellent uh, autonomic function area and overload area, and finally very weak area. In this case, very close to the overload area because the heart rate variability uh, is only 10 percentile. The heart rate variability good as large as possible. In this case, only 10 percentile. The SDNN is uh, minus one standard score is usually very low compared to the norm and heart rate is uh, a bit uh, faster compared to the norm. So close to the overload. And HRV spectrum is usually very healthy. The pattern is very, tachogram is very wide in, in the uh, blue area. But in the red, in the red area, uh, histogram is very sharp. Uh, the HRV distribution is within the red area. The, it, it usually reflect the poor autonomic, uh, autonomic resilience and, and balance. In this case, the HRV is kind of poor. And this is the, based on the gas phase model, general adaptive syndrome, stress, general adaptive syndrome for the stress. In this case, we can uh, locate this, this patient condition is a kind of alarm stage. Is, uh, uh, this, if the alarm stage uh, sustain a certain amount of time, it, it goes over the resistance stage and finally exhaustion and burnout stage. This is the uh, based on uh, general adaptive syndrome model. 
And we also uh, uh, keep the result of the machine learning algorithm for prediction of the depression and anxiety uh, using the HRV parameter. In this case, both depression and anxiety is quite normal. Uh, here is the example case for the MCI result. In this case, prob probability is uh, just around 16%, quite close to the normal developmental trajectory. And that also gives a detailed ex explanation for five different classes from the multi-level ensemble classifier. This is quite normal. And this uh, stage two is a healthy range, but having the amyloid pathology, amyloid pathology. And this uh, stage three and stage four is uh, a range this, uh, detected as the mild cognitive impairment. But in this stage three shows the amyloid pathology, uh, don't show the amyloid pathology. It is, this stage four shows the amyloid pathology. And stage five already blown to the uh, Alzheimer's dementia. So we can finally give the five different stage model result using the uh, using usually two and uh, three minute I cross recording EEG data. Uh, finally, I'd like to briefly show the main functionality of the icing wave application. Uh, one is easy measurement and the other is LED therapeutics. In the settings, uh, there are uh, I think wave setting. In this setting, you can select the notch filter for the line noise uh, for the line noise uh, uh, rejection, and you can also uh, also set the uh, routine time structure for the recording. And in the user manage management, and you can define the sub user under the master user. Uh, today's presentation, I'd like to share a brief idea of a QEEG landscape using under arousal and over arousal phenotype model for introduction to this field for newcomer um, and also gives a uh, iSync pro I think product overview from iSync wave uh, simple recording to connected iSync brain and iSync heart analytics in which quick summary result for showing uh, overall uh, arousal uh, uh, pattern using source level set of beta ratio, HRV analytics with a normative database comparison and the guest space stress model and emotion evaluation model using the uh, machine learning algorithm. And finally, I, I show, I sh we showed uh, we saw the MCI early screening biomarker for preventing Alzheimer's dementia development. Uh, in the next meeting, I'd like to demo, uh, uh, which include from Icing Web recording to Icing Brain Peak report and review full report on the web. Today, we only see the simple peak report, but we can review the full report on the uh, portal site. And I'd like to show the manual denoising process process. And uh, I'd like to add a strong group statistics function, including normative library in the next meeting. After second meeting, I'd like to start a review a real disease case using our uh, I, I think, uh, uh platform. And we can discuss uh, your uh, user's case together on the using the iSync Wave QEG uh, Telemental Care Platform. Mm, thank you so much for your attention and boarding iSync user group meeting today together. Thank you so much.